as you lift your hands to him this morning and just love Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord. Lord, we praise you this morning. We say, it, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing it for you. In the name of Jesus, let's sing to the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Jesus. Lord, we lift up holy hands to you today. Sing it. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wave them at it. Just wave your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask that we bless our Sunday school this morning and our, Lord, our teachers. Let me say we're so glad to have our guest with us this morning on the back. We appreciate them so much. Appreciate them so much. And uh, expecting uh, God to bless this service today. And uh, if you got a need, I believe God's a, a way maker. I believe He supplies needs. And I believe He can do anything. I just believe that's the kind of God that He is. Let's go to Him in prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to be here. We pray, God, that you would minister in this service this morning, minister through the Sunday school department. Bless these teachers and anoint them and use them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As they're singing. Sunday school can be dismissed. Sister Chrissy, come right on. Sing it, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Bless you, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, Brother Gill. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today for the many blessings. And God has just richly, and I want to emphasize that, richly blessed us as His people. And I'm just so thankful that he's given me the opportunity to serve him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, our lesson today, as Brother Willingham has already reminded me, is on giving. And I, I say this. You notice all the lessons that we've been studying use the word discipline. And so I'm still in that disciplining stage, too. And everything that I'm teaching up here, it's not to say that I've mastered it all. I'm still under that training, just like you all are. And I got to thinking about our lesson on giving today, and I, I hadn't even got to my notes yet, but since he reminded me, I'm going to go ahead and say it. <clears throat> I was sniffling, and I guess I, I meant to give it to y'all. I, I, I told Sister William I wasn't going to get close to her because I wasn't going to give her. But it, I don't know if it's contagious. I just got sniffles this morning. And he said, but our lesson's on giving. I said, but you can't have this. <laughs> I don't like these sniffles today. And I'm sure it's just allergies and all that stuff that's going on. But we sure, uh, but when it comes to giving to God, I want to give him everything that I've got. Amen. Uh, my heart, my soul, my mind, every part of me, Brother Jim, I want to give it to the Lord today. Amen, amen. Pastor's already mentioned how thankful we are for our guests, Joshua and Kelly. Did I get that right? All right. And good to have, Lord, I saw him a while ago. He took my offer, Brother Gillum. He's here visiting from California. We're glad he's here with us today. And Brother John somewhere is, I don't know if he's in the building or next door, but these folks have to go all the way to California. We need to pray for the jobs in Tennessee to open up for, for, so folks don't have to go all the way to California for work. You know, that might be a good prayer request, right? Hey? <laughs> Nothing against California. It's just a long way from Tennessee. I just like the home. I just like this good old volunteer state myself. Amen. Of course, I've never been to California. I might like it. I don't know. No, you won't like it. I won't like it, Pastor. 
We always ask one of our ministers to stand and pray, and I believe Brother Chris prayed last time I ministered in Sunday school. But Brother Jim, would you offer a blessing upon the reading of the Word of God today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Grant it, Father. Grant it, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. So we're looking at a series of lessons. Uh, the theme is growing in grace. Folks, I don't know about you, but I want to grow. Amen. I don't want to. I don't want to be stunted in my stunted in my growth spiritually. I want to grow in grace. And so we've been studying for the last six weeks. And we've covered uh, certain areas that, that we all need discipline in. Uh, we've uh, covered the subject of prayer. Amen. We need discipline in that. Fasting. Oh, me. Yes. Uh, we even covered foot washing uh, about two Sundays ago. And then Pastor talked last Sunday on meditation. And today we're uh, studying the, the discipline of giving. And uh, w when I first read that title, I thought, Discipline of giving, you know, that just kind of, boom, 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 you know, why do you need discipline in giving? But as I read a little further and studied a little more of the lesson, I realized what it was talking about. But here's the thing, folks, when we've been born again, born again uh, of the water and the spirit, our heart becomes sensitive uh, to the things uh, that God would have us to do. And, and, and as a child of God, Folks, it's not a burden to give. It's a blessing to be able to give. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing. And, 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 and it, it's a privilege to, to get to participate uh, in a time of worship and with our giving. And, and we've been given, folks, I, I just feel like we've been given so much. How could we not return uh and give of ourselves to the one that's given us so much? He uh, he's you know, he's given us everything that we need that pertains to life and to godliness. And, and so, as we think about giving, most of the time we think about monetary. But we're going to be talking about today how we need to, This is, the giving includes our time, our talents, and also our treasure. And, and, and it's a fact that our Lord and Savior, He is, He was, and He is the greatest giver of all. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean. John 3.16 tells us that so very well. For God so loved the world that he, he gave. He gave. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So his, his very character is love that caused him to give uh, himself for all mankind. And, and, and you know, uh, the Lord of glory... He is our perfect example, Brother Jim, of what a giver is to be. And we've been given, we've been given the privilege to serve the Lord and demonstrate the spirit of giving. And when we were born again, as I said a while ago, the water of the spirit, we were born into the family of God. Right. Now, uh, we didn't have a whole lot to say about what family we were born in in the natural. Right. You know, when I was a kid, y'all never probably thought this, but when I was a kid, I used to think, how come I couldn't have been born to some movie star? Or, you know, be born into some rich family. Y'all didn't think those things, you know, as a kid. I remember thinking that. But I'm thankful I did. I was. I'm thankful for the for the beautiful heritage that I have been given. Amen. And so, but but we had something to say about being born into this family of God. And we've been given God's sweet Holy Spirit so that we can become. A disciplined giver. Now, today's scripture setting uh, is in the Apostle Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth. And the Apostle is referring to the offering uh, that the church at Corinth had collected for the uh, poor or impoverished, impoverished saints at, that were at Jerusalem who had suffered a famine uh, during the reign of Emperor Claudius, according to uh, the Apostolic Study Bible, Brother Mark. I did use that in reference today. Uh, so let us, lead, let us go to the Word of God and read Paul's thoughts on the subject of giving in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 15. The very second verse that we'll read will be our focus verse, but let's look at 
uh, our lesson in 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But this I say, the Apostle Paul speaking, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Then our focus verse is verse 7. Every man, every man, as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Now if I'm not mistaken, the word of God tells me that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. We've got a heavenly father that looks out after us, Brother Jim. And whatever we have need of, he's our need Amen. supplier. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I like the song the girls sing talking about if you've got a, a problem, he, he's got, you know, he's got the answer. I, I can't even think of the name of it now, but but whatever we have need of, that's the that's what our heavenly father can supply. Amen. You know, in the natural, dads may not be so able to supply all the wants of the children. And sometimes it, you might find it a little hard even to, to, to supply the needs. But we've got a Heavenly Father today that knows no bounds. He, he has a limitless supply. And when we recognize Him for who He is, our Heavenly Father, amen, and we begin to uh, call on Him for whatever that need might be, I just believe by faith when we do that, God hears our cry and He is a God at hand and not a God afar off. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for our God? No, there's not. Uh, that's the answer. God can do whatever. Hallelujah. We will believe Him to do if we'll only just believe. Amen. So, so God is able today. And verse 9 says, As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. And, and, I, and when I, as I read that, I thought about the, the, the psalmist David who said, I was once young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Again, that just lets us know how powerful and how sufficient that our God is. Hallelujah. And what a giving God he is. Hallelujah. So verse 10 said, Now he that ministers seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Uh, there was a time uh, in, in there in the New Testament where there was some division about different ones and who they were giving credit to for what they did. And Paul just spoke up and said uh, uh, that, that he had uh, he, he or had sown and, and I think Apollos water, but it's God that gives the increase. Uh, folks, if anything's accomplished in this Sunday school class, class or in this church service today, it'll be, be because God is the one that gives the seed, gives the increase of the seed. Whatever seed is sown today, it'll be God that gives the increase. Uh, hallelujah. Verse 11 said, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us uh, thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, oh, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Now look at here, supplied the want of the saints. Uh, you know, but I believe, now you can believe how you want to, but I believe when we get our heart right, our wants are right too. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. Uh, verse 13 says, Boss, by the exper experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Look here. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. That gift that can't even hardly be described. It's such a beautiful gift. The gift of grace. The gift of salvation. So we're looking today at, 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 at giving. The discipline of giving. And, and so the discipline of giving, it starts with the very nature and the character of God. Uh, from, from the beginning, God has given. From the beginning. When he made man, he put him in a beautiful garden. Everything that man needed, God gave it to him. Yes, sir, hmm. yes. Now, I, I just want to tell us as children of God, everything that we need, God has supplied that need. 
Hallelujah. We don't, we don't have to go looking into the world for things. We serve an all-sufficient God. He's on time. He supplies the needs. Right. Hallelujah. He, and, and, and part of that song says he's a chain breaker. That's right. Amen. That the girls sing. And, and you know what? If we got a problem, we can carry it to the Lord. We can take it to Jesus in prayer. And you know what? He, he's a problem solver today. Whatever the situation is, that's what we can turn it over to God. You know what? The problem is sometimes we just have trouble turning loose of it. All right. <laughs> We all the time trying to work it out, figure it out. But if you'll just turn it over to Jesus, I mean, really turn it over to Jesus, He'll work it out for you. And so uh, God, God created man, put him in a beautiful garden, uh, gave him everything that he needed. But you know what? There was some. What can I say? When the tempter came along, uh, and 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 just kind of dangled that bait at, at Eve, she just, she sucked her teeth into it and, and of course she gave it to Adam and, and they, they sinned and disobeyed God and, and even though God had provided everything they needed, he told them there's only one tree you can't eat of and that was the very one that they disobeyed God and partook of uh, and, and I guess I would like to say that they were kind of greedy because they didn't need that. Can I just go a little farther and say there's a lot of things we don't need either. Not trying to be a smart belly. Right. Right. Uh, and so uh, the, the enemy tempted and they partook. And, and, but you know what? It didn't take God by surprise. No. no. Uh, for God's greatest act of giving was when he manifested himself in flesh and then died, gave his life for the sins of this world. At Calvary, we see that God gave of his very self so that, that you and I could be saved today. Uh, what a sacrifice, what, a, what an awesome God, what an uh, eternal pattern of giving that the Lord has, has given to us. And, and giving is not what we do out of obligation, folks, but it is what we do because we've been given uh, His nature, and that nature is the nature of giving. Right. Yes, it is. You know, uh, I, I talk about this quite often, but a lot of us grew up very poor. <clears throat> Uh, now we're not millionaires today. That's not what I'm saying. You know, uh, you know. I talk about sometimes how just putting sugar and butter on the biscuit made it, you know, something different. And I got a terrible look from some of y'all when I talked about putting mustard on pinto beans. <laughs> hey, we were looking for something different, you know, beans and taters or taters and beans. You know, it just gave a little, a little flair to that. Look at Sister no, no, she just thinks that's terrible. I shouldn't have even mentioned that. <laughs> Point being, we grew up poor, folks. Right, 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 and and right. just a little, a, just a little uh, altar in there of, of something that would taste a little different. It was, it was kind of special, you know. And, and so, uh, but, but to think what God has, how the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can remember back yourself uh, probably to, to times when you didn't know where the next bill was coming from. Right. Right. Didn't know if you was going to have a, a meal to put on the table. Right. And, 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 and I never do this, and I, I tell this because uh, I, I thought it was kind of interesting. My brother said he had seen my grandmother take a little bit of the what was left over cornbread and, and take that inner part away from the, the crust and put back into some more meal to make another pan of bread. I never saw that, but I, I'm the caboose of six, so you know he saw things that. I didn't. But point being, you know that's how meager that that people's lives were, and, and to think of, you know, sometimes we turn our nose up at good food. Oh, I don't know if I want to go there or not. I'm tired of eating there. Oh me. Uh huh. Hey, listen. The Lord's been good to us. Yes, ma'am. When we came to Covington, I think McDonald's was about the most of eating out that we had around here. Maybe there might have been Sonic. I don't know, but we're talking about 1981 when we came here. And and for us to get to go to McDonald's, folks, that was a treat. Now kids say, I don't like McDonald's. I want to go. And I'm like, dear Lord. But I'm 
just talking about the goodness of God and how much God has blessed and how he has given to us. Now, now some of y'all ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. I'm speaking a foreign language to some of y'all. Y'all think that is just, that's, that's pitiful to live like that. No, we didn't know any different. Brother Creasy said he didn't know that. He said we didn't know we were poor because everybody else lived just like we did. So the nature of God, uh, that's what we have been given as, as his children. So uh, we, are, we are partners, uh, giving partners, uh, being, being born again in the Spirit. Uh, it, it causes us to partner with God. Uh, and in our lesson today, the author tells about how the children of Israel gave for the construction of the tabernacle in the wilderness. You see, the tabernacle was a foreshadowing of the new creation, the, the fact that the dwelling place of the Spirit of God, now you are the temple of God. And, but, but then they made a, a tabernacle for the Lord. Uh, but unlike God's uh, first creation uh, in, the, in the creation of, of the tabernacle, God didn't create it alone. He allowed his people to partner with him by bringing the materials out of which the tabernacle and all of its furnishings were made. Uh, Moses said to the people in Exodus 35, 4 through 9, these words, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever, look here, this little phrase right here I want us to look at. Whosoever is of a willing heart. And remember Paul talked about how to give, not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. But, but here the Lord is telling them, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord. Gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood and, and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. These were things that needed to be brought so that the tabernacle would be thoroughly furnished. And, and so this uh, offering was to supply the need for everything in the tabernacle from the Ark of the Covenant it, down to the priest's uh, service garments. Everything that they gave for the tabernacle was to come from a willing and a grateful heart. In other words, the creation of the, of the universe stood uh, as the world was created out of the generous and free will of God, and so was the tabernacle. To, it was to be created out of the generousness and free will of God's people. Now, where did they come up with all this jewels and gold and silver? Where do you think they came up with it? Anybody know? Yeah. Egypt. That's right. In Egypt. Yeah. If you look in, uh, I think I've got it there, Brother Mark, uh, Exodus 12, 34 through 35. I've got it penciled in here. And sometimes I can't read my writing. Isn't that beautiful? I'm jumping a little ahead right here. It said, and the people took their uh, mm, gold before the, uh, okay, somehow or another. Is that 34? Go to 35. I didn't put this. Okay, here we go. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed, look at this, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. If you'll go to the next one, please. And the Lord, look at here, look here. Here's how they were able to do this, folks. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. Look here, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Now look here, these folks, God's people had been in bondage for some over 400 years. And God says, I'm fixing to get my people out. Moses, you're going to lead them out. You know the story of the plagues. But God said, there's one more plague that I'm going to send. And they're going to, Pharaoh's going to thrust you out. But before you go, he said, you go to your neighbors, those Egyptians, and you start borrowing <coughs> This was how Israel was able to provide the things for the tabernacle. It had come from the Egyptians, but who had allowed them this privilege? Can I just say to us, who allows us the privilege to earn what we get? 
Amen. Who gives us the strength that we need? Who gives us favor? I, I'm telling you, it's God that does these things for us. And amen. He requires so little. Amen. Uh, 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 he blesses us so much, Brother Jim, and requires so little. Amen. Now, you can just mark me down as a bad person, but I have a hard time giving a waitress or a waiter 20% when God only asks for 10. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. I don't mind giving, but every time I we give... You know, beyond that, I think, well, God, you only require 10%. And if you have a bigger party sometimes than five people, you don't get the option. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You say, are you trying to be stingy? No, I'm just saying. People will give 20%. Right, right. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. To people that maybe might refill your jar, your jar or your glass one time. But they have trouble giving God 10%. Where did we get what we got? From God. Where did the Israelites get what? God gave them favor. If it had not been for the Lord, do you think they would have? God knows what He's doing, Brother Jim. And God is the one that makes the call. All we got to do is get with God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, I, I think that was a little rude of me. And those of you that wait tables, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I don't mind giving. I don't mind giving it, but it just that just thing that just says ding. Okay, I need to go on. I need to go on. We do tip generously. Please don't don't think that I don't. We do. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay, I, I'm just getting right off the lesson right there. I, I, I hope I'm not the only one that thinks that. And I'll tell you something. No, I ain't going to say that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. We have guests today, and I'm, I'm not being very whatever. I'm being kind of. Okay. So, so the, this offering uh, that they gave was, was so that the needs of the tabernacle could be met. And, 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 and everything that they gave for that tabernacle was, was to come from that willing heart and grateful heart. Then in verse 20 of Exodus 35, the Bible said in all the congregation, everybody participated. It wasn't just a few. And all the congregation of the children of Israel uh, departed from the presence of Moses, and they came everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments, and they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man that offered, offered an offering of gold, Unto the Lord. So the Israelites, they were they were stirred in their hearts, and, and they went back and, and, and to their tents, and they brought that offering, Brother Jim, to the tabernacle. And if I'm not mistaken, and I believe I'm correct in this, they brought so much, Brother Mark, that this is where Pastor often quotes from that that the Lord the Lord told Moses or Moses told the people, "That's enough. Don't bring any more." Now I've been in places where they kept passing the pan, but not. Not this way. Right. Don't bring any more. What an offering. What a stirring. Uh, I'm going somewhere with this. And so uh, their offering came from a desire. Oh, dear God. A desire. I think, it's, I think it was the Magruders. Now, y'all just going to have to bear with me because I, I, I'm still as old-fashioned as cornbread. <laughs> but I believe it was the Magruders that used to sing, I want that old-fashioned, red-hot desire. A kind that sets my spirit free and sets my soul on fire. I want it to affect my life. When I go to God in prayer, I want that old-fashioned, something, something, I can't remember the next words, red-hot desire. Folks, that's what I want in living for God. Listen, folks, we may be living in changing times and when people are getting farther and farther away from what is straight line, amen, uh, preaching of the Word of God, want to live every kind of way, want to straddle the fence. Uh, but I want to tell you, when you've got that red-hot burning desire down inside of you, amen, it's not asking too much, uh, amen, to give yourself whole, totally. 
totally and completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not asking too much. So uh, they, they were inspired because they had a desire. And Moses, who was inspired by the Spirit, held a vision of a dwelling place of God before the people's eyes. And they caught that vision, folks, and responded how? By giving. Now this is this now l listen, this is this is gonna hit my toes before it hits yours, okay? So if you holler out, you might hear me ho holler at first. But I think it's time and high time that we as God's people get back to the point of giving, amen, more than just Amen. Our Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night time to God. I believe it's time that we go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Amen. It's time we begin to give of ourselves once again. They used to tell of old time preachers standing on the courthouse corners preaching the word of God. You don't see that much anymore. They probably wouldn't let you unless you had a permit this day and time. But I'm going to tell you, somebody's hungry for truth. Somebody desires, amen, to be set free. And I believe we as the apostolic church, amen, have the, the means of helping folks and giving to them. Amen. Giving to them. Uh, there's a song that says, thank you for giving to the Lord. Amen. And I, I don't know all the lyrics of it, but, but it, it came from someone that was thankful because somebody had given to them the message of salvation, had shared, if you want to use that saying, had told them about the Savior, and they were thankful for the life that they had lived. Folks, there's somebody that's hungry, amen, to know who Jesus is. Amen, all kinds of things are going on in our world, but the one that can set people free is so rarely talked about. Amen. Amen, there's everything you can find on your phone, on those smartphones, but they're not smart enough sometimes, amen, to tell you the plan of salvation. But somebody has been set free. Somebody knows what it's like, amen, to be in tune with that power from on high. And that's what we've got to give to our world today, the truth. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So they caught the vision. And I would that I caught the vision. We catch the vision today. Uh, those once proud but now in poverty, long enslaved descendants of Abraham parted willingly with the only luxuries that they had ever possessed. The bracelets, the earrings, the, the rings and jewels that those Egyptians had given them when they left Egypt. But when they envisioned a place for God to dwell among them and when they saw in their imaginations the, the dignity that such a dwelling place could bestow upon them and upon their children, they gladly melted down the legacy of some 400 plus years of work and turned it into a place to worship God. What an awesome thought today. You know, uh, <laughs> I better just stay one up to them. It, it would be some hundred years later that a, that a little woman by the name of Hannah would come and bring her son to the very tabernacle so that he could learn the ways of the Lord and serve God as a high priest and a prophet. This little little boy named Samuel, he was a descendant of the very people that turned their ornaments into a tabernacle. And he would grow up in the house of God and he would become one of Israel's most memorable prophets. And, and the children of Israel must have known they were building something special. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear God, I would today that we could catch the vision of just how important the house of God is to our soul. And I, not only our soul, our children's soul and our children's children. Oh, listen, folks. I think sometimes we just take it for granted that the doors are going to be open and we're going to be able to come to church. But we have a freedom that a lot of places, a lot of countries don't have. We can walk through those doors without being, amen, intimidated, amen, because we want to worship God. We don't have to go underground to give God praise. We've got every privilege, amen, that, that's allowed to a human being to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I just want to ask us, what is our problem? Why is it it takes, amen, it's like pulling teeth to get some people to get up and give God a little praise. Oh, I, I, I.
I, I'm going to get back to my notes because I'm, I'm just not being nice when I get away from them. I'm just talking too much there. But, but our lesson asks the question, what if God gives us similar opportunities? When a group of people get together and give of their time, their treasure, and their talent to form a church, to build a sanctuary, to, fu to fund a ministry, to take the gospel to a city, is not this group taking advantage of an opportunity similar to the one that God's uh, people gave, that God gave to Israel? You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a marvel to me to consider that, that we, can, we can even turn our small, seemingly limited individual gifts into something of influence. Infin infinite uh, value where our sons and daughters and our grandchildren have a place to worship the Lord. This is not just another building, folks. This is the house of God. Amen. This is where we meet. This is where we come, amen, to get our soul fed. This is where we come to get our, our praise, uh, give our praise to the Lord, uh, to acknowledge Him and worship Him. It's not just a meeting place. It's a house of God. You know, when, when a, a child gives, uh, when, we, when we think of how that, that uh, what we can give uh, of our time, you know, when we partner with the Lord, uh, we ask, how can we give? What can we do for God? Folks, we can give our time, we can give our talents, and we can give our treasures. Time is the true treasure that enriches the valuable things of life. You see, time is what life is made of. And wasting time is a terrible thing. And I'm going to tell you, when I got to, I got to this part of the lesson, I, I felt convicted. Because there's a lot of things. Now, I'm just going to fess up and y'all just listen to me, okay? Okay? I'll, I've asked the Lord to forgive me. But I, I, I can hang in there all day going to antique shops. No problem. Walk through there. Oh, I remember Mama had one of them. Granny had one. Oh, man, look at that. And Brother Creasy, he's just walking, and I'm saying, oh, honey, look over here. And he's just like, oh. I can tell he's enduring. I mean, I, you know, I see all this old stuff, and I, I don't buy hardly anything, but I'm just amazed by it. I can do it all day, you know. Then I thought, God, such a waste of time compared to the time I could be spending with the Lord. Now, I'm saying, oh, me, and y'all just say, bless her, Lord, help her to do better, Okay. Because she needs help. But I'm just saying. Wasted time. I didn't go there to buy a thing folks. I just love to look. I go to junk stores. I got more junk in my garage than probably Goodwill just about God. Because I've been there so many times. I got so much Goodwill junk it ain't funny. But I still like to go look. Man one day I went to thrift shop. And I found 99 cent goblets. That probably if you bought them at Macy's. Which, you know, they're, they're, they go with the, the, the china I have. And for 99 cents a piece, man, that's a deal. You know? I get all excited about that kind of stuff. They look what a good deal I got. But it's a waste of time. You know why? Because all that stuff's going to burn with a, with a fervent heat. When, when I go to the cemetery, they ain't going to bring my china with me. Those 99 cent goblets that probably cost about... Nineteen ninety nine a piece if you bought them at Macy's, huh? They not gonna take that with me. It's just gonna be me in that box and what I've done for God, my soul. Oh, so time is what life is made of, and, and wasting it, folks, is a terrible thing. Knowing the value of time, what could be a more sacred gift than the gift of our time? Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. What can be of more value than our time? I know y'all getting quiet. Because you know what? I think I'm not the only one that is a time waster. That's right. That's right. You're saying you're boring me with this, Sister Chrissy. But I'm telling the truth. Yes, ma'am. Amen. You know, when you, when you pay for those piano lessons for a, a little child to take those piano lessons, if they get really involved and they really want to play that thing, they'll, they'll practice, they'll put time into it. And one day you'll hear them on the piano and they can make the most beautiful sound come out of that, uh, that, that instrument. Why? Because they've invested time, their time into it. And, 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 and you take an artist, that somebody that loves to paint. I wish I could do all those things, but I can't. Uh, but but that they invest time uh, learning techniques and learning you know, what colors, how to, how to blend.
million colors and the textures and how to make that stroke just right on the on the canvas and and, and then one day they, they make this beautiful work of art why because they have invested time into something and so such is man's relationship with time his investment in time makes him uniquely knowledgeable of what to uh, of that to which he's given his time in other words they learn it well you know uh I was talking to a lady that gave piano lessons. She's your piano teacher, Brother Mark, your girl's piano teacher. And she was telling me about a certain uh, uh, government official here in, in the county that she taught to play the piano. And I was like, wow, yeah, that's amazing. A gift, you know, gifted and talented. Uh, but, but, but it just didn't happen overnight. Time was invested into it. Can I ask me and you a question? What are we investing our time in? Right, amen. So, uh, life offers us a, a trade, knowledge of and talent in a topic in exchange for our time. There's no substitute, folks, for our gift of time. Nothing, you know, when you get to a certain age, you look back and you start thinking, you know, most times it's I wish, I wish I did this or I wished I had done that. And then you realize you can't bring that back. But we've got today to begin. As they often say, today is the first day of the rest of your life. So life accepts only one form of currency for knowledge, and that is time. Time. The majestic and incomparable subject of God is no different. Folks, time spent getting to know our God will be rewarded. How? With knowledge of Him. When we spend time with the Master, when we take time, and, and I'm hurting me, folks, okay? I'm hurting me. I'm, I'm not a lazy person, but it seems like I get so involved with doing, 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 till it's like the Lord gets the short end of the stick. Now, I'm just telling the truth. You can say, oh, me, or amen, but it is the truth. And, but, but here's the thing. We cannot expect to know God's ways his, or His will in our lives or His purposes without giving of our time in exchange. You know, I know this sounds silly to probably you younger folks, but some of you older folks can tolerate me with this. But after almost 49 years of marriage, I still enjoy spending time with Reverend John Creasy. Amen. All right. Yes. Hadn't got tired of being around me. And sometimes it's like, okay. I, I think I told him that morning as he was leaving. I said, it's okay if you go to church. It's okay. I know you've got to get ready. Da, 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 da. Because sometimes we, we get so involved with doing other things that we don't make time for each other. But any time of the day that he's not out visiting, you go find that truck or that whatever he's driving parked here at the church. That's right. Folks, he, he don't take a day off. That's right. Monday through Sunday, you'll find him at the church. Right. I, don't, I don't know if even doctors are that committed. <laughs> are they, Brother Gillum? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, you know, time with the Lord. Folks, he's got a wealth of wisdom because he spends time with God. I can tell you a whole lot about two-year-olds and three-year-olds because I spend a lot of time with them. <laughs> so uh, the child of God, and I'm going to use this word ought to, okay? The child of God ought to devote a significant amount of time each day getting to know God. <coughs> Folks, we get to know Him by studying His Word, Amen. by fellowshipping with Him in prayer, and guess how else we get to know Him? By service to others. Amen. Service to others. Amen. Right. Ooh. Makes me want to get a pan of water out and wash some good sister saint's feet. <laughs> I just want to have that servant mentality, brother, brother Rodney. I, I, I don't want, I, you know, listen, I ain't there yet. I'm pressing. 
I'm pressing as hard as I can. And, and every, every Sunday I get up here, it seems like I teach to me more than I do to you. But Brother Jim, I know one thing. I've got my mind made up. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm still pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm not about to quit. I may not be where I want to be, but honey, I'm going to hang in there, amen, until I do hear him say, See, it's the devil's business to try to make us stop and tell us you ain't doing no good for God. You ain't making no progress. Why don't you just quit? You say the devil tells you that, Sister Tracy. Oh, yes, he does. All right. If I listen. But I know where that voice is coming from. And he wants to take me where he is. And I refuse to listen to that voice. Hallelujah. I told him this morning. I said, Satan, get thee behind me. <laughs> and that's what we've got to do. Man, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Sister Margie. So, I shouldn't have took my hand off my spot. I lost my spot. Ain't that terrible? Now, all these political people talk about being transparent, but you can't get much more transparent than that. I'll tell y'all exactly what I'm doing up here. <laughs> I lost my spot. But I think I got carried away because, I, I, you know, of, of how that, that, you know, we ought to, to spend time with the master. How that we got to give him uh, our time and service to others is part of that, uh, of giving our time. And folks, we got to give our talents. You say, I'm not, I don't have any talent. There's something you can do. Amen. You know what? You may have a word of encouragement that somebody needs. We're not talking about playing music. We're not talking about getting up here and singing or getting up. We're talking about what you can do for God. That's a talent. That's what the gift that God has given you. There's people that know how to speak the right word at the right time because they've got a word of exhortation and it comes from God. You're in the body of Christ. You've got a function. You've got a talent for God. You may not, you may not have, have got there yet to understand what it is, but I guarantee you there's something you can do for the kingdom of God. So, uh, another way that we partner with it is, is giving our talents. Our talents are unique abilities given to us by the Lord. And we understand that our talents can be enhanced by cultivating them and practice. As we, as we give our time to develop our talents, we can bring glory and honor to God. Now look here, folks. We're not, we're not in competition with one another, okay? Right. You know, we're not. I'm not up here trying to compete, compete to be a better teacher than, than, than these brothers or be a better speaker than, you know, I, I, that's not what I'm up here for. I'm up here because, first of all, Pastor asked me to be up here. Right. Second of all, whatever I can do, whatever my hands find to do, Brother Jim, I want to do it with all of my mind. Right. I might not can do it like somebody else can, but neither can they do what God's called me to do. We've all got a part in the family of God. And when we give our talents and, and, and our time to God, and, and we, we continually work for the kingdom, Brother Jim, it's just like, you know, it's just like that, that old, old, old plow. You take, I don't know much about farming, but I know if that plow gets rusty or that hoe, okay, you know, hoeing in the garden, if that old, you know, from, from, from season to season stuff gets, you know, rusted up. What, is, what does the farmer do? He gets that old uh, file out and starts sharpening that, that hoe. You know, used to, they made good hoes with good metal in them. Now they just make big clunky ones. Seems like, seems like they used to make little small handles and the, and, and the, the you know, and, 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 you know it's kind of, but it was good stuff. Now they just make junk. Where did I get there from? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you can't sharpen them, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They ain't no good, you know. That old, that old, that old real stuff. Now, I better get off that. Y'all think I'm old fashioned. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but just but using what we got for the Lord. And, and then, then giving, giving of our treasure uh, along with our time and our talent. We give to the Lord. Uh, hey, Benjamin Franklin that is quoted for saying this, time is money. I don't know if I ever heard that or not. Probably the boss says that a lot. Time is money. You guys better get out there. we got to get this done. Time is money. I don't know if they say that or not. 
But, but those who earn a money have given their time and talent in exchange for currency, and that currency can be exchanged for food, clothes, and, and shelter, and whatever that, you know, that they need to do. So time is money. When we, when, and folks, when we give our tithes and offerings to God, we are enabling the ministry that God has given to our church to be able to focus primarily upon pastoring, upon studying God's Word, and teaching God's Word. And, and what we receive from that ministry in exchange for our giving uh, to the house of God, folks, it's priceless. Uh, giving is like a seed that continuously bears fruit. When we give of our, our tithes and offerings, not only are we receiving pastoral care and counsel and wisdom for, for our families, but folks, we're helping somebody else to be able to hear the Word of God and be saved also. Amen. Hey, you're the ones that keep these lights on. The air. I, I know the air conditioner gets a little cool sometimes, but that's why we've got these blankets around here in case y'all get cold. I thank God for this cool. But, but, you know, that's where the ties and offering goes. You know, uh, the power bill, you know, uh, things like that. Thank God for people that have got a vision and, and want to see the house of God uh, go forward. And, 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 and I'm thankful for ev everyone that does that. So, so, so when we when we give to God, we we're we're giving of our our our, our treasures, you know, and, and and growing in grace will cause us to be disciplined in our giving. We will give of our time, we'll give our talent, we'll give our treasure. Second Corinthians nine six says, "But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly." You know, somebody that's just want one or two tomatoes. You know, just a few tomatoes, maybe they're the only one. They'll just plant one or two plants. But we talked to a gentleman the other night, and uh, he said he had a truck patch over in Henny. He's got one in Covington, and he said somewhere else he had stuff growing. You know, you know what he was looking for? Yeah. He was looking for a great harvest. Right. He didn't sow sparingly. So, so, and he went so bountifully. That's what he was. He was so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Amen. Folks, if you give and you'd rather have it in your pocket, you might as well keep it there. That's right. That's right. If you get up here and say, well, I'll sing, just because Brother Creasy asked me to sing, but I really don't want to, you might as well stay in your seat. That's right. That's right. Now that's plain and blunt, but it's the truth. Because you're doing it grudgingly. That's true. You're right. You're right. That's true. Amen. That's true. And so uh, he said, uh, 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 so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Folks, we will reap bountifully uh, if we sow bountifully, but, but we'll reap according to the amount of the seed we sow. You know, if you just want to uh, one row of corn, you don't you don't get out of go to the seed place and buy two or three pounds of corn seed. You just get a little package, you know, a couple right. little packages, because you're not wanting to harvest much. Right. But if you want a great harvest, you better you better tell that man load you down with some seed, because I want a whole lot of groceries to come right. out of this truck patch or this garden that I'm oh. working on. And, and so, if, if we sow just a little seed, then we're, we're going to harvest only a small amount. However, if uh, and say, if we sow a lot, well, then we're going to reap an abundant harvest. So the amount that we reap or receive is in the power, guess what, of the hand and the heart. Right. That's right. Where our desire is. Right. Do we just want to be called a Christian? Do we just want to be recognized as, you know, on the board or, or one of the deacons or one of the elders? Is it just an just a, uh, ego thing? Or do we want to, to see a harvest of souls for Christ? Do, do we want to see God, amen, moving, and hallelujah, and, and, and working in our, in our lives and in our hearts and, and in, our, in our services? Or are we just content to just sit on the pew, clap our hand every once in a while, and maybe lift one hand, you know, if we don't have to do it too long? You know, <laughs> ooh, Lord have mercy. I thought of this too when I was thinking about time. You know, sometimes we don't feel like we got time to stay around these altars and pray. Because we already.
come with leaving on our mind. Huh? Already wonder if we're going to beat the Baptist to the restaurant. Uh, are we going to beat the uh, Church of Christ or the other Pentecostal church to the restaurant so that you know we can get a seat real quick? Oh, my Lord, my Lord. Time, time. What are we investing? You know, what are we doing with our time? You know, uh, are, are, we, are, we, are we sowing to the flesh or are we sowing to the spirit? If we're sowing to the flesh, guess what? Yeah, we're we're going to reap corruption. But if we're sowing to the Spirit, we're going to reap life everlasting. Right. You know, it, it's in the hand of the sower and in the heart of the sower, whatever. You know, we, we make that choice ourselves. You know, uh, God, God, will, God will reward those that give from a willing heart because God loves a cheerful giver. Whatever we desire to do for, for God, let us do it with a right heart and a right spirit. You know, you know, if, if, the only, if, if, if we're only doing things because we think pastor expects us to do them, then I think that's called doing it grudgingly. But if we're doing it because we want to please Him and because we love Him, whether it's giving our time, our talent, or our treasures, Whatever we're doing, if we're doing it for the cause of Christ, folks, I'm going to tell you, God's going to reward. Hallelujah. We must be disciplined in our giving today. God bless you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. He's worthy today.